But now it's time to pull out all the stops, get ready for my double chocolate pear trifle. This is decadent. I have five pears here that I've peeled, cut in half, and then I core them to get them ready for poaching. When you're poaching pears, you want to use a simple syrup, essentially equal parts water and sugar. So I have three cups of water, so in goes three cups of sugar. This poaching liquid is for more than just cooking the pears. It's a great opportunity to add flavor. To heighten the taste of the pears, I add a quarter cup of lemon juice and then vanilla bean paste. Before I add the pears, I like to bring this up to a full simmer to fully dissolve the sugar. Now that my simple syrup is simmering, I can add the pears. You want to give them about 10 minutes. Then I simply turn off the heat and let them sit in the liquid. Now you'll see here, the pears like to float right to the surface of the pot. So I have a special tip for when you're poaching pears. What you need to put on top of your pears is called a cartouche. A cartouche is a piece of parchment paper that rests directly on the liquid on the pears so that they cook evenly. I fold my parchment into a wedge and with a pair of scissors, I take it over to the pot and just roughly guess the radius of it, cut and open. So your cartouche should just fit inside the pot, like so. While my pears are poaching, I can get the cream element, the custard, ready for the trifle. I'll start with two cups of milk and add two teaspoons of vanilla bean paste to it. And as that heats, I'll get my eggs ready. Six egg yolks. To the yolks, I'll add six tablespoons of sugar and a quarter cup of cornstarch. I'll give this a little whisk together, and by now, my milk should be nice and warm. I'll take it off the heat and introduce it to my eggs. And back on to the heat to cook completely. I have my bowl with butter, two tablespoons this time, and I'm adding three ounces of white chocolate. And then I can get the cream element. My pastry cream is beautifully glossy and thick, but I will still strain it. Give that pastry cream a stir to melt in the white chocolate. Plastic wrap right on the surface. And then I'll set this aside to cool, which leaves me just enough time to make my chocolate ganache, the bonus to the trifle. So I'll start by measuring half a cup of whipping cream. And you wanna heat your cream to a full simmer, but keep an eye on it. Whipping cream can boil over when you heat it. And now I have four ounces of chocolate. Pour the hot cream over the chocolate. And then I just gently stir the chocolate and cream together until it's nice and smooth. Let's take a peek at those pears. They are well on their way. At the 10 minute mark, I shut off the heat, but I let that carryover cooking happen as the liquid slowly cools and the pears cook all the way through. And then, you know what's missing on my trifle? Well, chocolate cake, of course. So that's what I need to make along with assembling this gorgeous trifle. I start by sifting my dry ingredients into my mixing bowl. First, a cup and a half of cake and pastry flour. Also, one and a third cups of granulated sugar. Half a cup of cocoa powder. Now for a little baking soda, three quarters of a teaspoon. and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'll sift this together. 
Before I put this on the mixer, I'll add my half a cup of butter. It's unsalted butter and it's cool butter, just cut into pieces. I'll mix this on medium speed, working the butter into the flour mixture. It's sort of dry and crumbly at this stage, but I don't see any pieces of butter, so I know I'm ready for the next step. First, half a cup of hot coffee. And let's add some milk to the coffee, half a cup. A teaspoon of vanilla will go in. And I add this all at once to the cake base and mix it until blended. You'll notice at this point the sugar dissolves because of the hot coffee. So now I can add the last ingredient, two eggs. And I'll mix this on low speed to blend it first, just to build some structure into the cake batter. There we go. And as I've been doing with the trifle cake bases, a sheet pan is best. I'll just pour that batter right in. Spread it right to the corners of the pan. And this is ready for the oven. It takes about 25 minutes at 350, and it'll be all done. Here's the cake out of the oven and cooled completely. So now it's time to get ready to assemble this beautiful trifle. I'll turn the cake out, peel off the parchment, and let me show you the trifle bowl I've picked out. I found a tart ring mold that is the perfect size. So looking at this rectangle, I can only fit in two cleanly. So, I'll also cut out two half circles to put together. And a half circle on the other side. There we go. Now that I have everything I need, it's time to assemble. Here are those beautiful poached pears, and you can really see that translucent look. You know they've absorbed all that beautiful vanilla syrup. I've saved some here, and I'm going to use that to brush on the cake. I have my ganache that's cooled a little bit, and I've got my pastry cream. And just like the English trifle, I have a little whipped cream to put on top. So I'll take that first cake layer and I'll brush the cake with the vanilla syrup. Now for the pastry cream. And then this is where I spoon some of the ganache over the cream. Just a nice drizzle. The idea is you're gonna get those hits of chocolate as you're biting into your trifle. Now I'll layer the pear on top of this. Now I'm ready for the next layer of cake. Now for that final layer of whipped cream for right on top. There we go. And for a little accent, how about a bit of grated chocolate? The final touch on this dessert, I have one poached pear that is sliced. There we go. Isn't this decadent and beautiful? And who would have guessed such versatility from Trifle?